if you can't afford property or if you're maxed out so you can't actually buy any more property to grow your wealth? Well, what we want to share today is if we were starting from scratch, yep. what would we do? Like what if we couldn't afford to get into the property market and we wanted to generate wealth in our lifetime? Now, we're in a strange time in the world at the moment with all investments, actually, well, I, aren't we? I was going Not to, just property. I was going to say, Liz, it's a common thing we're getting asked at the moment because we have a lot of real estate investors in our community and it seems like everyone's just maxing out or mm -hmm. maybe you're starting out and you're looking at real estate and going, a uh, million dollars to buy that debt. as in for an investment, mm -hmm. not even talking about buying your own home here. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us like this idea of owning a portfolio of assets of which to generate significant wealth over the long term. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the interesting stats here in Australia, mm -hmm. Liz, and anyone listening here from the ATO mm -hmm. is that less than 0.5% of the Australian population own more than three real estate investment properties okay. so i don't say so the top these... percent of the top percent make wealth through property yep but what do the rest of us do so there's not many the yeah there's all these i know real estate generates a lot of wealth right mm. it definitely does oh yeah but who are these people that own a portfolio of real estate not very many mm. you know less than 99 percent of aussies and i'm sure it's the same in the world round and you know, a million dollars to go into debt or a million and a half dollars or a couple of million dollars, that's a lot of risk it, on, risk. on your, you know, on your wealth generation. It's very draining too. I think stats are coming out now as well about how much property actually costs. Yep. Like once you get into that high debt level, to, to even sustain that property, um, you're almost going backwards. Plus land tax. Plus land tax. And I know in America, we, we I speak on a lot of podcasts about this. I'm yeah. in America, in certain states, the taxes you guys have can be really good but in some states they're not so good mm. here in australia really interesting particularly if you're our victorian friends south of the border <laughs> um apparently you guys are really getting hit up with some massive taxes so you're, all coming, state investors. Yeah, you're all coming to queensland and driving up the property prices so <laughs> what we want anyway so what do you do so yeah. okay and then we've got a share market that's pretty volatile at the moment yep. as well and we, who knows which way that's going to go so okay what do we do and i think for matt and i something that right from when we were very, very young, we believed that we needed to take things into our own hands. We wanted to invest in things or, or learn, get experience and knowledge around things where we actually had some control. And just call me a control freak. I was just going to make a joke. <laughs> not a control freak or anything. I no, yeah. Perfectionist. Um, but a bit of a control freak. I want to be in charge of my own destiny. And I do believe that that is one of the keys to generating wealth in your lifetime, mm. especially if you're not starting with a high level of wealth to begin. But even if you are, if you want to generate significant wealth to retire well or to pass on a legacy to your kids, then you need to do some active stuff to make that wealth grow quickly, quick enough to be in your lifetime. And so what you do need to find is assets that you have some input into so that you can actually influence their growth. You're not just at the whim of the growth of the market that you can actually do something too. Now in property, you could do that. Like you can buy development Very, blocks oh yeah. and do all sorts of cool stuff. But yeah. unless you've got the cash to be able to do that or the borrowing capacity, that's something that's out of reach for a lot of Australians now, which yeah. I think is something that's really coming to the fore. What do young Australians do if they want to generate wealth or even if they want to, I had read somewhere, um, it's going to even be impossible for the vast majority of Australians to save even a deposit in their lifetime. And that's Whoa. kind of sad. That's scary. Like, yep. you know, that, that cuts a lot of people out of that marketplace. So, okay. So what do you do instead? And one of our mentors, when we were very young as well, um, said to <laughs> us, first things first, and this is yep. where I think a lot of people get it around the wrong way is that the first thing you need to do is actually get your cash flow sorted before you start investing in heavy assets and yep. taking on huge debt. The first thing you need to do is really learn how to generate a bucket load of cash flow. Mm -hmm. And a really great way to do that is have small assets that are nimble and fast and easy to grow, easy to leverage, and that you can buy and sell relatively easily. And add well. value to. And add this value to. Yeah, that's super, and one thing important. I want to point out here is obviously, and, and if you listen to this podcast, I'm sure you know Liz and I's story, we invest in businesses because mm. that's what Liz is talking about. And what we love about businesses, it's not just the really high cash flows that you can get out of businesses. We renovate businesses. That's mm. basically what we do. So we get up dry, on this concept of getting 
massive cash flow. That's what we're really good at is picking good businesses that we can renovate reasonably easy, like our property friends do, mm -hmm. but we're in it for the cash flow. But there is one other massively important thing that we're building. Now, we're a little bit older than when we first learned this. And we've got the benefit of Liz is laughing there. Um, I'm in my mid fifties. I'm not allowed to say what age Liz is, <laughs> but we've been doing this for a long, long time. And we've got the benefit now of being like our older mentor who taught us this things compound. And what we've created over a long time is also a highly valuable asset value, just like traditional real estate. So I understand real estate compounds, but it's no use to, if you can't buy multiple properties because they're in the millions of dollars. Businesses, also, you, if you're new to business, you need to be thinking of these as highly, highly valuable assets. And I think the guy that nailed this many, many years ago, just go and read, I'm sure you have, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. Seriously, I reread that again recently. Hmm. Gosh, it's good. There are so many benefits to businesses, as there is to real estate and shares and all the rest of it. But we are talking about businesses is what we've done. And and if we did, you know, starting again from scratch, the way yep. we had to generate cash flow and the way we grew cash flow quickly was through business. We invested a lot in stock and in like product and things. We had manufacturing businesses and wholesale distribution businesses and businesses that required us to buy product to resell or, or manufacture product. So that was, again, really hard on cash flow. And that it took us a long time to learn how to manage all that. And then it actually took us many, many years, like a did. decade, yeah, and we but... weren't get rich quick type thing. It took so long to do it. And as young entrepreneurs and anyone now, as we all know, I don't care whether you're you're just starting out or a high net worth, it is trickier now with the banks. We could not do what no, we no. did <laughs> back in those days. We won't like the way we got loans off banks. Remember, they were the good old days, Liz, when you we you knew to know the bank manager because it was in a country town and the bank <laughs> manager just you know write you the loan. Those days are gone, and we took massive risk because we we had no kids, we had no debt, we uh, sorry, no real assets behind us other than our businesses. So we just we just we took geared, a bet on ourselves. We geared right up. We took a bet on ourselves. So what we would recommend you do today on that note mm. is take a bet on yourself, yeah. but not financially. Yeah. You do it time-wise. So one of the things, I'll just throw it out there that yeah. I've shared with on some private coaching calls with some of our younger clients. I've said, you know what? You've got two options here because they're, they're saying, how the hell do I, yeah, we're stressing do I do? out. What do we do? Buy these, do I buy an investment property, Matt? I'm not allowed to give financial advice. I'll say, here's what I would do. I would just back, I'd say, I'm going to set a vision for my life for my next 10 years. Think a little bit longer term here. I'm going to back myself and in terms of um, uh, going for it, I'm going to give it a crack for 12 months and see what I can do. And so it's not about borrowing heaps of money. It's just, let's see if I can buy some smaller sized assets for cash. Like you've got to have some money to make money, right? But get started and learn how to do this, how to buy and sell businesses and just see if I like it. And particularly where we, what we love is online businesses because the buying price, honestly, you can buy a great little website, well, starter site for under five grand. Yeah, so but there's practice. four, there's four, I want to mention four okay. um, really big benefits of now, because like I said, this has changed and we've now got the ability to buy these online businesses yeah. that are so much more nimble, so much easier to renovate um, yep. compared to what we were trying, you know, we were having to do. Um, when we were in business, like starting out in business. So four things, first of all, like you just said, Matt, number one, low cost. So for five grand or under, you can buy a little business asset and be starting your renovation um, journey and you can be building that knowledge. And I think this is something yeah. really important that um, actually Diary of a CEO, CEO guy, Steve Bartlett, I think his name is, he, he expressed this really well. He said that there's a progression um, mm. through your wealth journey. And Certainly. the first two parts of that progression are knowledge and skills. Yep. And that's where now you can buy a small asset and learn, like get them, you can get knowledge. And obviously that's yep. what we teach people. That's how we help them shortcut and get all the knowledge straight up rather yep. than having to search around and figure it out yourself. Don't make the mistakes that we made yeah. or learn the good stuff. Yeah. Um, but get that knowledge. And then the next step is applying it, like going and buying yourself a little asset to put that knowledge into action, because that's then getting you to a point where you've got to go to the next stage where you start networking, getting uh, other people and finding other people that can help you because people are the keepers of your dreams. It is amazing what will happen when you get out there and, and network with people. I'm going to jump in really important so that we don't miss it. Yep. 
This is the other beautiful thing about buying online businesses. And this is a bit of advice. Don't quit your job. Yeah. So this is why I'm saying if I was going to, if I was to start again, I'd back myself. I'd, I'm not saying to quit your job and back yourself for 12 months. I'm saying get serious about this, yep. put some money behind it, buy a couple of little sites like Liz is saying, these are, but this is a learning and go, okay, over the next 12 months, I'm going to learn how to do this. What's the worst that can happen? Okay. You miss your 12 month window of buying some real estate or some shares or whatever. So instead of, I'm presuming if you're listening to this, you're investing, right? Most of our audience are. So instead of investing in maybe real estate or shares for 12 months, invest in your knowledge and buying a couple of little of these sites, go for 12 months and see that you like it. But during that time, you keep your job. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of, most people that listen to this are earning significant money. Um, so we're not saying to quit your job at all. Yeah, well, I guess that's point number two. You commit to doing this in the evenings in your Jimmy Jams. In point number two is leverage. Like these, yep. okay. these assets, online businesses are very leveraged. So you don't have to show up every day. You don't have to turn yeah. up at nine o'clock in the morning gotcha. and go home at five o'clock at night. Um, you can work on it for a couple of hours in the evening and then you you, know, you can go on a holiday. You can take a month off. It doesn't like it's it, it's up to you. This is what I think going back to the original, okay, what would I do? Because part of what we wanted to create was mm -hmm. leverage in time and the ability to choose how we spent our time. And so online assets allow you to do that because they kind of run themselves. Like, yep. It's it's more, a lot of it is actually about planning and then executing and having people who can help you execute that stuff. Like yep. get that, get GSD, get stuff done. Yep. Uh, so they are very, very leveraged in terms of time. Now the other point of leverage of them is point three, which is fast growth. So on a website, um, so the sort of assets that we tend to buy online are content-based uh, websites. Mm -hmm. So websites that give information, that that provide help for people, that guide them through buying decisions, that that explore a particular niche or topic or passion. And they're usually monetized with something like advertising or educational product, like a digital products or through referral programs. Yeah, so if it is they, product, then we we refer them through to Amazon or through can, somewhere else. It can be services too. We sell, services, sell yep, leads. Sell leads. Yep. So our websites are basically kind of lead generators or advertising yeah. billboards almost. Yep. So they're very, very leveraged. But what it does mean is what we're looking for when we're buying, we're looking for opportunities. We're looking for really good quality assets, a good quality site that someone passionate has mm -hmm. built yep. and then maybe given up on. They don't know. Maybe they don't know how to monetize it properly. And we're looking for those ones where there's simple, easy opportunities to turn that around very quickly. Um, very simple. One of the easiest ones is changing monetization. And I, there's a podcast. If you listen to the podcast with um, um, Dave and the Connor. guy, Dave and Connor, yes. All they did was change the monetization and double the website within months. And, and this, went, this happens over and over and over again. We should mention that was making $300,000. So mm -hmm. compare it to real estate because yep. they were real estate investors. That cost them a million dollars. It was making $300,000. This is all in U.S., and when they change the monetization, it went to six hundred thousand dollars. So, Dave, who normally invests in commercial real estate in America, was just blown away by that. Now, these are businesses. There, yeah. there is you got to understand there is more risk with yeah. businesses to a degree. But this is why we're saying back yourself for twelve months and learn how to do this. You get and, the skill. and buy small, start out safe, not not with a million dollar website. That would not be smart. We mm -hmm. don't recommend that at all. We don't want you rushing out there if you're listening to this and don't know what you're doing. Just buy small sites under five grand, learn how to fix them up. They might just be making a couple of hundred bucks, get them to making a couple of grand. So like Nathan Alexa, buying that little mm -hmm. gardening site, $400. Now it makes 4,000 a month, you know, yes. so they just a little on gardening and then yeah. not gardeners. And you can see on oh, this there podcast, one. Shay was awesome too. Yeah. That cost That's about four grand mm -hmm. and making, they got it to making around a thousand dollars a month. And now that's again, up to around 4,000 to $8,000 a month. You can see the interviews on this podcast. There's yeah. heaps of, we've got heaps of clients and net bought a travel site, you know, yeah. same sort of thing, making about a thousand dollars a month cost five grand. So there's lots of sites out there under five grand that make okay site income and mm -hmm. that you can learn off and you can hit some big wins with them. Like Lisa, her site for two grand yeah. has had $30,000 months. Now it's not doing that, not doing that right now, but you know, leading up to Christmas and stuff, selling the leads. So these, you can get, hit some big wins, even little $5,000 websites. Yeah. And so you, and the other thing too, is you can de-risk with knowledge. So that's, that's the point. Like you that's can, your biggest risk. You can, you can buy low 
and learn how to add value. I think that's the most important point here is that yep. to generate huge wealth within your lifetime, you need to learn how that's a strategy that you can add value very, fairly quickly to assets so that you can either buy and sell them or buy and hold them for cash flow. And if you think about it, that's what high, like, like huge property developers do. Mm. They just have a system for buying a block of land and adding certain and developments value. to them or adding yep. value in some way, rezoning it and then redeveloping it or whatever it is. Or, you know, at a, at a very basic level, you buy properties that had, need a kitchen, a bathroom, a paint job and a tidy up. So you're adding value. So instantly you're de-risking, you're lowering your risk by increasing value very quickly. So fast growth is one of those things that you should be is really good to look for in an asset that you want to increase its value. The ability to get relatively fast jumps in value by the things that you do to it. And that's, that's something that we've learned um, <laughs> over time that we realize, okay, we need, th we need assets that we can grow fast. Otherwise and, we're never going to get there. And we wanted cash flow. Yes. That's not so that's point number four. And the most fun one is that business cash flow is, phenomenally higher compared to real estate and shares and all that sort of stuff. Now, as Matt said, obviously the risk in business is generally the knowledge and skill risk. Mm. You've got to learn how to pick a good one and what to do with it when you got it. So how, how do, do you, how do you do due diligence and yeah. how do you renovate the asset? But once you've got that skill and it's interesting that our clients all find their own paths, they all find yeah. either a niche or a specific strategy that they get really good at. And then they just target websites buying that specific thing because they know they can see the value in that asset yeah. now. Yep. So they've got this specialist knowledge. And isn't it interesting? Um, I can't remember who said it. Is that you? The more you're paid, more for uh, the, the higher the, the, the rarer the skill, the higher you're paid. Yeah. And this is one of those skills that is super rare: knowing how to do due diligence and knowing how to add value. And you'll notice the world's richest people, that's what they know how to do. And the world's richest they know people. They value whilst, assets I know, if you, add value. I know for you real estate investors, you're going to say the world's richest people all own real estate. True. But guess what else they all own? <laughs> Business. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. So, and and we can do this again, starting out so flow of the business into real estate. Yeah. I'm like that's the other element that no, buy um, more. <laughs> I'm really excited about for young people. Learning this kind of thing means that you could like potentially, like if you can't save your way to a deposit, mm. then this is a way that you can, uh, you know, hopefully you can get skills and knowledge to be able to add value to a different asset class so that you can have the deposit. Like if you think about it, uh, and a lot of our students do this, they flip up. So mm. um, Joe started with a thousand dollar website, yeah. sold for 2000. Then yep. he bought a two or $3,000 website and sold that for 8,000. Yep. Then he bought a $20,000 website and sold that for what well, I can't remember where the next one steps, and but he just flipped up and up and up. So and at that, that point, he quit his job. Yeah, he did. So so go Joe, who, yeah. who is now the world's um, highest rated broker on the flipper platform. Uh, he started with us doing exactly that yeah. as a young guy out of uni, didn't really know where he was going with his, with his career and stuff. So he just started doing this as a side hustle. You can read his story here on our podcast. He was a clerk at, for the, for the government. And so he just got his skill set up to the point and he set a goal and what I, what I kind of alluded to as well, which is really big. And we'll maybe talk about it in another podcast, but setting that vision is so important. And it was really impressive watching Joe. He, he, he learned off us too, the power of setting a vision. He said, Matt, I want to quit my job. I'm not happy working for the government here and go Joe. He did it by yeah. flipping up websites. And yep. so, but that took him a few years. Yep. So it wasn't, wasn't an overnight success because he was still working full time. So interestingly, we were on Flipper just last night looking for websites mm, yeah. and um, oh we goodness. found like, okay, if I was going to start again, we found Quite a few. Like how many did we find? Uh, there was over under five K. We were looking at websites between a yep. thousand to five thousand. And um we found several that were really good candidates. More than several. Yeah, but it was over a hundred. There was over a hundred, but there were yep. several that I really honed in on that I thought, yep. yep, I could do something with that. There's an opportunity there. The double. Um, especially there was one in the education niche, which I really liked. Um, I was just speaking to a digital investor, actually, one of our members, about one in the caravanning niche. Yep. That was a great so under five grand. A, that was a really nice site. It could generate beautiful leads actually for mm -hmm. uh, caravanning, not not the actual travel round, but actually the caravans themselves. 
so selling the caravan. So they're nice sites for selling a big asset because you get yep. a really nice affiliate commission for that. Um, so if we had to start again, yeah, I'd, I'd be straight on to Flipper. Back yourself. <laughs> Back yourself, yep. Don't quit your job, but learn how to do this as a side hustle. I guess that's the new phrase that's out there, isn't it? And Find assets that you can add value to and build wealth. So build cash flow and then build assets that you can then sell to either flip up or generate deposits for other assets. Or without taking on massive financial risk by going into huge debts with the banks. Yes. And that's so do that. I love yeah. online businesses rock for that. Yep. Do it debt free. All right, so there's our episode. That's what we would do if we had to start again. And if you want a bit more detail on the actual strategy and see actual working examples, make sure you check out our free masterclass if for some reason you haven't. So you'll find it on our website, ebusinessinstitute.com.au. Um, just check out that free masterclass.